Okay, hopefully I have enough space on this video card to make this video. Um, so I get asked quite a bit, um, you know, just in talking to people, the difference between the limited cat one and the category zero hitch, three point hitch on the X7s. So I figured I would make a video since I have both hitches, uh, I'd make a video kind of comparing them both. Now the biggest difference between the category zero and the category one limited is going to be the width of the three point arms. Um, the width of the three point arms on the category zero is gonna be like 20 inches and the width of the arms on the category one limited is going to be uh, 26 inches. Um, it will not take, uh, the, the these arms right here on the category one limited will not move narrow, uh, will not move to 20 inches. So you cannot use category zero implements on when you have a category one hitch installed. So now on to differences. Um, when the X5, what I'll call the 4-5, 5-5 um, uh, units first came out, um, they uh, came with rock shafts and they also had a, um, they were still using the 4-5 four, four series, so that'd be the 425, 445, 455, and um, they were still using a lot of category zero uh, implements. So that's why you can have the option of either category zero or category one limited. Now the category one limited means limited lift height. In other words, the fact that you only have a, you know, at most with fully ballasted 2000 pound machine, and that would be like the X748, you know, with all kinds of ballast, everything else. Um, you're just not gonna get the lift height and nor can you attach uh, full-size category one implements in the back. Sure, there's lots of videos of guys that do it all the time. I'm not saying that you can't. Um, I'm just saying that it's it's not something I would think is all that that great because you're going to run out of weight or traction on the machine long before you run out of horsepower in any given case. Um, and you know, in in under certain circumstances, you can either run out of horsepower with, say, a category. Uh, or like a four foot box blade or something, which I think I have a video up on. So anyway, um, that's a whole nother ball of wax, but what I wanted to show you was the differences. So um, on this X748 right now, we have a category one limited hitch. Now, the biggest thing with the category one limited hitch that I prefer over the category zero, aside from the types of implements you can attach, is the fact that you can detach the hitch without much trouble. Um, so there's the rock shaft right there. You can kind of see that there are just pins that slide right in here and they slide right into these arms right here. Really simple. Takes me less than probably three minutes to put this hitch on this tractor. Um, and I'll, I'll show you, I can't video it because I don't have somebody to hold the camera for me. But um, I'll time it. I'll, pu I'll put it on and take the quick click and go off and I'll put it on real quick and I'll time it. Now, the category one right here, or the category zero right here, you it's not a quick attach. It's like the old style 318 hitches where the to adjust the the draft links or to adjust the, the three point arms, it's just a screw. And so to take the hitch off, you have to completely unscrew that screw right there, and then you have to hope that you never uh, hit that screw or anything and kind of bugger up the ends because that's, you know, then you wouldn't be able to attach anything. So it, that's what I have to do on my 318. Uh, if I want to take the three point arms off, is I've got to completely unscrew it and everything. Meanwhile, the category one limited is just a complete uh, quick attach. And so, you know, six of one, half dozen the other, um, those are the big differences. Um, I don't have one of the Rug hitches. Uh, I know lots of speak, lots of people speak really well of uh, Bill Rug's work. I have never had one of his hitches. I can't comment either way. Um, I know they've always looked nice in pictures. Um, you know, I can just tell you my experience with what I've had, and I've had it for my 318. I've had a JD uh, OEM hitch and a Redland Hill. I hated the Redland Hill. It just did not work right. Um, it the geometry is all wrong and can't lift squat and it loosens up over time. Um, and then these are two OEM 
JD hitches here. Um, I enjoy both of them. The reason I switched is because um, I, I needed, I've got a couple things, a uh, box blade and a land plane, a couple other things that I use for the category one uh, limited hitch. So now the biggest thing, if you're considering, uh, I was doing some research this morning and I noticed that Bill Ruge's hitch is uh, $425, which I think it's great. Um, the, the John Deere hitches right now are running like $647. I think when I first priced them out, they were like 585, 597, somewhere in there. Um, but the one thing, if you own an X4-5 or X5-5, so that'd be like the 585s, 595s, 575s, X485, stuff like that. If you own one of those machines, your machine will have a rear rock shaft. So you don't need some of the parts that you can get with um, the category one limited hitch because this lift cylinder right here is already in position. If you have an X series, uh, like an X7, so if you have an X700, 710, 720, 730, 734, all of those 728, et cetera, et cetera, on up the line. If you have one of those, um, you don't have a rock shaft on the back of your tractor. So you have to move the lift cylinder back. And so a lot of times, well, I know the kit will include these hydraulic lines and bunch of brackets and this long arm right here. And that's what you use to move the hydraulic cylinder to the back of the machine. You can see this arm right here. It actually goes all the way up in front of the, to the tractor to lift the deck. So that's the original, that's to lift the deck. Originally the cylinder is up underneath the tractor and you don't need, um, you don't need that, uh, there's no rock shaft so you can't put the cylinder back here until you get a rock shaft. So anyway, I'm running out of time on my SD card so I'll go ahead and wrap this up. But that's the difference between the hitches. Um, I like the, I really like the category one limited strictly because I can come on and off and I'll uh, quickly time it and I'll see if I can make some uh, room on this video card. Okay, got the hitch mounted. It took me exactly a minute and 45 seconds and that includes turning the tractor on so I could lower the three point so uh, these arms could line up. Um, because I haven't used a three-point in a, quite a while, uh, it was just kind of stuck up in the up position. Um, not a big deal there. So anyway, like I said, uh, minute and minute and 45 seconds somewhere around there. Um, I have to look at my timer again now that I've forgotten. Um, it just does not take very long to put this on. You can see it's 26 inches between there and there, or at least that's a 26-inch Category One bar. Um, you can't get a 20 or 21 inch bar in there. Uh, it just doesn't narrow up that much. So um, that's why you can't use category zero implements on the category one hitch. So anyway, um, I think that's about it. Kind of show you, show you the differences between, two, between the two hitches and um, why I kind of like the category one over the category zero. Uh, I'm gonna keep the category zero around because they don't give these things away for free and so if I ever need to switch back, switching them, switching between the two is an absolute pain because you've got to take, particularly if you got the click and go brackets on, um, it's just, you know, taking the rock shaft off and everything else. Uh, it takes me, I think when I switched these over, it took me about 45 minutes to switch the two. So um, just a lot of hardware, lots of nuts and bolts that you can't really get your hands to, stuff like that. So it's not like you can switch them back and forth uh, if you have both. So uh, now I'm gonna go ahead, even though the ground's a little wet, I'm actually going to go ahead and um, hook up the four foot box blade that I have. Show it to you. So here's the box blade. Um, I posted a little video a while back of the, the X really kind of bogging down as I was pulling up a little hill. Uh, I had some, some wet dirt uh, in this box blade. Um, you can kind of see it's still, still in there. It was really sticky. Um, so anyway, this, I mean, this is just a four foot box blade, nothing special about it. Um, I mean, you know, so if a lot of guys say, oh, you can put a five foot box blade behind there. Yeah, you can, you can do lots of things, but that doesn't mean necessarily that it's, 
you know, the most effic efficient or most effective. Um, in some cases, you know, finding these little smaller units like this is not an easy task, uh, particularly, you know, there's not really much um, when it comes to uh, kind of consistency between different farm stores and stuff. Um, you know, what they have on their website, what's pictured is not necessarily what you can go to the store and buy. It's really frustrating at times. Uh, I was lucky enough to get this box blade and this this land plane together. Um, both are really nice. I really like them quite a bit. Uh, so anyway, I'll uh, if I have some little bit of time today, I'll, I'll make a video of the X pulling the box blade now that I got the three point on there.